Today we're talking about the AK4500 from Fiutech. That's this gimbal right here. And we're gonna go through my thoughts on whether I think this gimbal is a good choice or not. So I've been using Fiutech products for a little while now, and I've tested a bunch of their gimbals over time. Some of the older ones that I worked with, I wasn't the biggest fan of, but the Fiutech G6 Plus was actually a smaller gimbal that I really like, and it's made for like small cameras like the M50, or like a smartphone or a GoPro, like you could put a bunch of different cameras on that. So I was pretty excited to work with the AK4500, and they sent me this one a little while ago, but I didn't put a video out right away because I wanted to test it in some real world settings. I really wanted to try this gimbal and work with it because I think when you're doing a gimbal review, you really have to use a gimbal in different settings and use it in different ways to really understand if it's a good gimbal or not. Guys, if you're new here to this channel, my name is Jevin Dovey. I do filmmaking tutorials, I do product reviews, and I also do a lot of YouTube training, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss one of these reviews. So the most important feature when it comes to a gimbal is whether it's smooth or not. You can have all the bells and whistles in the world, but what it comes down to is, is the gimbal smooth? A gimbal is there so that you can do these shots that you can't necessarily do with handheld, so you don't have to carry things like sliders and other products around to be able to get smooth, stabilized shots. That's the point of a gimbal. So when I shoot, I take my stabilizer off the camera and I test it all in 30 frames a second so I can see whether there's like micro jitters or not in the footage that you're seeing. If a gimbal has like a ton of micro jitters and you get these little movements, then no matter what feature it has, it's not a good gimbal to get. And on the other side of things, no gimbal is perfect. There's always gonna be little things that happen when you're shooting. And a lot of times, if you just put it through some post stabilization, that's when you get that crazy smooth footage. You just have to figure out the limitations of a gimbal, where it's good, where it's bad, and how you're gonna actually use it. So before we get into the features about this gimbal and the things that I actually really like about this setup in particular, let me just show you some of the footage that I've been getting out of this. And I've actually taken this gimbal out with me on a ton of shoots recently. However, there's one in particular where I shot single camera, five minute takes, and I shot over 10 workouts for my friend's Pilates channel here on YouTube and basically did this all one camera, no cuts, no nothing, because I really wanted to test and see how this performs over time. So let me just show you some of the footage from that shoot so you can see how this gimbal performs as I'm moving around. So that was just a little bit of footage that I've been getting out of this gimbal. If you wanna see the full five minute takes, I'm gonna put a link down in the description to my friend's channel. You can go check out Jenny's videos and you can just see how this gimbal performs for a longer period of time. There's no post stabilization on this videos. It's just the footage straight from this camera using autofocus from the Olympus EM1X. Now the reason that I chose this camera to shoot with on this gimbal is two reasons. This camera is much heavier and also it's got amazing autofocus. So typically when I'm running a one man band and I'm shooting in this kind of a setup, maybe a handle off to the back like this, it's harder to judge focus because you don't have a big monitor. And also I'm trying to shoot in a smaller setup so that I don't have like big pieces of gear all over. Now, when I'm shooting in that style, I have to use autofocus. You can't really judge focus off of this tiny screen. And that's where, you know, this focus wheel, I really don't use on these gimbals a lot of times. Now the Fiutech 4500 has a focus wheel here and it does have a motor that you can stick on to be able to do your focus. However, personally, I'm never gonna use it in this configuration. So Fiutech actually makes a ring for this gimbal and actually puts the focus wheel on the outer edge so you can use your thumb with a two-handed grip. And with this setup, you can mount a monitor and all the externals to really be able to judge focus and use your thumb controller so you really have control in that ring format. But what's cool about this focus wheel, even in this configuration, is that this is mapped out to not only focus. You can use it to control your camera's tilt. You can use it to control your camera's pan. You can use it to control the roll. So instead of just being a focus wheel, you actually have the ability to control different directions. So if you're in like a tilt lock mode, you can have this set to tilt so you can make minor adjustments as you're shooting and not have to manually do it using the little thumb wheel on the back. Cause sometimes 
your finger slips and it pushes it too far and all of a sudden your shot's ruined and you have to start over. So having the focus wheel that gives you some more options is a nice touch. Now in terms of working with it, the thumb controller on the back is great. It allows you to reset and it also allows you to lock the direction. So as you're shooting, you can hold it, it will lock all directions. So you don't have to put it in the lock mode. Now one of the really cool things about this line of gimbals is that they have a touch screen on the back here. You actually really never need to control this gimbal using an app because I typically don't like pulling up the app and having to do like all the adjustments if I wanna go shoot. I'd rather just be able to turn on the gimbal and then just do a few minor adjustments like changing the power based on my camera and things like that. And you can do that all from the touch screen. So that is one thing that's really nice about this gimbal. And also as you're shooting, you have all your modes here at your thumb. So if I have two hands on and I'm shooting, what's cool is I have it in right now tilt lock, but let's say I wanna take it out of tilt lock. It's just a quick touch. It's not a click of a button. It's not a double click. It's not a triple click, nothing like that. It's just a thumb tap on the touch screen. And now I'm in a different mode. So what I found when I'm working on my bigger shoots and I'm running all day, is that this is actually something I use all the time. I didn't think about this when I first initially opened the package, but when I'm actually out there shooting, this touchscreen becomes one of the main things that I'm using when I'm doing these longer takes, because I'll be in tilt lock mode, and then I'll click it over to follow all mode, and then I'll click back to tilt lock mode. And it's seamless because I could just use my thumb to adjust between the different modes, and it responds really well, and it's visually very easy to see what mode you're in so that's one thing that I personally really like about this gimbal. Now, the setup, it's amazing. Let me turn this off for a second. You have locks on all the motors, so when you're balancing, you can go one motor at a time, or if you're traveling, you can lock this, and then it's never gonna move in your backpack. That's a huge feature for me personally because when I'm traveling, when I have this in a bag, I hate it when gimbals are shifting around. Now, everything on this gimbal can strip down to its basic parts, so you could take off this big handle, which is a nice little feature. It's kind of like the Crane 3 Lab. However, it's removable, and you don't have all your buttons on this, which personally, on the Crane 3 Lab, having all the buttons on this handle that's off the back is frustrating because I'll end up hitting those buttons and changing the modes. So it's nice just having a really light handle that I could just use for stability versus having it being engineered into the gimbal itself. Now we're back to like a stable, just handheld gimbal. One of the really cool things about Fiutech products in general is they do make everything removable. So the actual motors can be pulled off and this can be stored in your bag in one place and this handle can be stored in your bag as well. Now this is huge because if you're running with smaller packs, then you're able to break this down and still be able to carry this gimbal with you. Whereas my Asun A1 Pro, which is this is the gimbal I've been running around with for the most part, it doesn't have locks, and when you strip it down, you still have this nub off the bottom that has all your controls, and it's kind of a pain when you're traveling and you wanna break it down. So I do like the design of the Fiutech 4500. Also, this gimbal is so much more heavier than this gimbal. In general, with the Fiutech 4500, it's a pretty light gimbal. There's still gonna be weight. It's not gonna be like the lightest thing in the world because this is a bigger gimbal that can house bigger cameras. So you could put your full friend DSLR bodies on here and you could also put your small mirrorless on here. So it kind of fits all sizes of cameras and you don't really have to worry if you have multiple bodies and you have bigger bodies, you're not gonna have issues because this thing can handle a lot of weight. So it's super easy to set up. Like I said, when I was shooting with Jenny, I just packed this in my backpack and we went hiking and then did her shoot all over out in the woods. And it was great because this gimbal is super easy to set up. Now, one of the other things that really stands out about this gimbal is the sled. And what's interesting is it comes with two different mounts. So you have your typical Manfrotto mount, but then also you have this dual mount system where the camera actually lives on an arc Swiss type plate. So you have both. So whether you're carrying video tripods with you or photo tripods, you can actually adapt this to either. So you have the Arc Swiss or you have the Manfrotto standard. Honestly, I've been keeping this plate just on this camera and I've been bouncing around to my different tripods, whether I'm on just like a simple photo tripod, the one behind camera right now is on a simple photo tripod, or I have one of my bigger video heads. I've been able to use this without having to replace plates as I'm going from tripod to gimbal and back to tripod. So that's kind of a huge advantage of this one in particular. So recently I was on another shoot where I brought the AK4500 and this one was much more demanding than the shoot I did out in the woods. The reason is I had to really move around the subject 
using this gimbal and really had to push it in various directions and see how it performed. And overall, as you can see through this footage, the gimbal works very nicely. I was chucking it up, down, left, right and it held the balance the entire time. Using the Olympus EM1X on a 12 millimeter 1.2, so I was getting that super shallow depth of field, the camera kept it in focus, and I was able just to move and let the camera do all the work when it comes to focus. But you can see how smooth the footage is as I'm moving around my subject. Now I'm not gonna break down every other feature on this gimbal. This gimbal does have a bunch of other features. It's got like time lapse, it's got inception mode, it's got this thing called shadow mode, which is like quick whip pans. So it's got a lot packed into this gimbal, and I don't wanna just like spout off specs and things like that. Honestly, what I wanted to do was show you how this gimbal works and actually put it through the test. And for me, I actually really like this gimbal. This gimbal works well. I've been able to get smooth footage with all the different productions that I've taken it on. And this is actually the gimbal that I've been using for everything recently. So I have a bunch of gimbals. I have the Crane 3 Lab, I have the Asun A1 Pro, and I, I've been kind of dancing around between my different gimbals, and the one I'm currently using for everything is this, and there's three reasons. Number one is that it works well, it's stable, that's the most important part. Number two is that it breaks apart, so I can break it down super easy, put it in my bag, and number three, is that it's super easy to use, it's super simple with the touch screen, but also, you know, it has the buttons that you need right here on the handle, and I never really have to dig into the app. So personally, yes, I think this is a good gimbal. If you're in the market for a DSLR gimbal, I highly suggest checking out the AK4500, and like I said, if you wanna see more footage from my shoot with Jenny, where you can see full five minute takes, I'll put a link down below in the description so you can check those out. And guys, that is it. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below and I'll see you on the next one.